Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the ISJEC Heavy Engineering Q4 FI22 Earnings Conference Call hosted by ICSA Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Modi. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Seema, and good day, everybody. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I would like to welcome all for the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of ISJEC. The management is being represented by Mr. Aditya, Managing Director, Mr. S.K. Khurana, Executive Director and Company Secretary, Mr. Kishore Chaknani, Full-Time Director and CFO. We will start the call with the opening rem remarks on the results and the outlook by Mr. Puri. Post that, we can have the Q&A session. I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Puri for his opening remarks. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our quarterly earnings conference call. I hope that you and your loved ones are all well and safe. We look forward to a fruitful interaction. We've uploaded our presentation on BSC, NSC, and on our own website, www.isjek.com, earlier today. There is also much more information about our business on our website. Let me now talk about our consolidated financial results for the quarter and full financial year. The total consolidated income for Q4 of FY22 is Rs. 1597 crores, which is about 2% lower compared to Rs. 1627 crores for Q4 of FY21. The total consolidated income for 12 months of FY22 is Rs. 5512 crores as compared to Rs. 5477 crores for 12 months of FY21. Consolidated data for Q4 of FY22 at Rs. 108 crores is, however, lower compared to 131 crores for Q4 of FY21. The consolidated data for 12 months of FY22 at Rs. 325 uh, crores is also lower compared to Rs. 507 crores for 12 months of FY21. The consolidated profit after tax for Q4 of SY22 is Rs. 39 crores as compared to Rs. 68 crores for Q4 of SY21. The consolidated profit after tax for 12 months of SY22 is Rs. 115 crores as compared to Rs. 253 crores for 12 months of SY21. The profitability has been sharply lower in the EPC segment. It has also been lower in the manufacturing segment and in the sugar segment. The EPC segment has been adversely impact, impacted by steep increase in material costs due to increase in commodity prices, mainly steel and aluminium, also nickel and copper. Time and cost overrun in EPC projects due to the impact of COVID-related disruptions coupled with shortage of skilled manpower. Sharp increase in freight costs both for purchase of materials and supply of goods to the customers. Normal employee costs and increments. As you know, last year we had salary cuts. The lower profitability on the EPC segment will continue for some time as the fixed price longer duration orders presently under execution were booked before the increase in commodity prices. Profits in the manufacturing segment are lower because of some impact of commodity prices and normal salary costs. Profits in the sugar segment is lower due to lower quantity of sugar sales, that is 16.19 lakh quintals for in FY2022 versus 21.76 lakh quintals in FY2021 as there was lower export. Since we are carrying good profits, uh, good stocks, the profits will come in as and when the sugar is sold. Regarding sugar exports, as you know, last year we exported a good quantity of sugar under the government's export subsidy scheme. This year there was no government subsidy, uh, government, ex sorry, this year there was no government export subsidy scheme and we being located very far from ports find it uneconomical to export sugar in comparison to sugar factories located in coastal states and near to the ports. 
We have, however, co contracted to export small quantity of 10,800 metric tons of sugar, which has been exported in the current financial year. The consolidated profits have been adversely impacted by interest and other costs in the ethanol plant and under construction in Philippines. I will now talk about the order booking. The consolidated order booking for Q4 of FY22 is rupees 1442 crores as compared to rupees 147 crores of orders booked in Q4 of last year. The consolidated order booking for 12 months of FY22 is good at rupees 5608 crores compared to rupees 4863 crores for 12 months of last year. Consolidated orders in hand as on 31st March 2022 are rupees 7322 crores against rupees 6765 crores as on 31st March 2021. The order book position is satisfactory. Of the consolidated order book, 77% is for the project business and 23% for the product business. The board order book includes rupees 1113 crores for export orders, which is just over 15%. The order book for Isra Hitachi's Ocean is also good. It has rupees 644 crores of orders as on 31st March 2022. The overall market demand trend is encouraging and the inquiry position is very good. Firm inquiries and budgeted inquiries exceed rupees 10,000 crores and export inquiries have also picked up. As our order book is well placed and we are going slow on order booking in view of the high volatility in commodity price and also being choosy in booking new orders and focusing on orders which offer reasonable margins. Some customers are also delaying placement of new orders in view of the high commodity price leading to higher product project costs. Order booking and profitability on orders may improve given the softening of steel prices earlier this year after the month earlier this month after the government imposed export duties on steel. As you know, the new 100 KLPD ethanol plant at Saraswati Sugar Mills has, been commenced, has commenced commercial production in December 2021. The plant is operating at full capacity. Regarding the Cavite Biofuels ethanol plant in the Philippines, we will be starting construction in June 2022 and expect to complete the plant by June 2023. Information technology upgradation by implementing SAP. In order to improve our internal processes, controls, project management, costing, resource planning, and financial reporting, we are doing a business process re-engineering, BPR, LED, SAP, S4, HANA, ERP implementation. This will also prepare the company for undertaking a larger scale of business. We've selected and engaged one of the big four consultants, MS Ernst & Young ENY, as con a consultant to conduct the BPR assignment and also configure and implement this SAP software. We plan to go live on the new system by 1st April 2023. My colleagues and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Digant Haria from Green Edge Wells. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, so first question is on the first question is on the product division. Uh, sir, if you look at the last four years, we are, you know four or five years, we are roughly between fifteen hundred crores to seventeen hundred crores of revenue in the product division uh, for the full year. Uh, so, so you know it's five years, and you know we have not been able to break out of this fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred crore band. So, uh, and you know, now at least we are seeing some uptick in the order book. So, could you help us with what are the key sectors which have to do well for this products division to do well? So, one or two key sectors which, you know, where a lot of our order books come from. Uh, okay, I'll answer that question. The, the product uh, business uh, derives its uh, uh, orders from a, a diverse, uh, uh, quite a few diverse sectors, and I will uh, just speak about them. 
uh, it does so from the oil and gas, uh, petrochemical and fertilizer industry, that's the process plant uh, uh, business. Then it does uh, from the automobile sector, and then uh, to uh, uh, some extent uh, uh, from boilers uh, and castings from uh, cement plants, uh, um, uh, carbon uh, cement plants, soda ash plants, and uh, um, uh, and steam turbine uh, and the turbine uh, turbine business, whether it's hydro turbine or steam turbine. Okay, so, so the largest two would be uh, uh, you know automobile and this uh, whole oil and gas and uh, refining and these sectors, right? That would be the two largest sectors. Yeah, yeah, they would constitute the largest sector. Yes. Okay, okay, sir. sir and uh, and in terms of product portfolio, how have you moved in the last four or five years? Because I just see that you know even there we are facing margin pressures and 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 you know like can we do we have the capacity or or you know the we to go to the 2,000 crores kind of a revenue in the next one or two years in this product division? Uh, maybe in the, in, in the next three years that visibility should be there. Uh, uh, we have a sort of increased, uh, uh, made investments in uh, one of our foundries and expanded the capacity. We should give an incremental output of, uh, uh, of 70, uh, about, uh, about 70 crores. And we are also uh, uh, planning to do marginal investments to increase uh, uh, the, the turnover. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so my second question is, uh, you know, broadly on, like, so see, I've been following this company for around eight years now. And, and you know, before the Philippines incident happened, you know, we always used to have eight or nine percent of our revenue in working capital. Uh, you know, generally margins would be between the six to eight percent range. Uh, so versus that backdrop of our history, uh, you know, our performance on all the parameters is, you know, relatively at the lower end, I would say, you know, whatever we have seen from history in the last eight, nine years. Uh, so, so sir, is it something, uh, you know, within the company that needs a lot of improvement because of the environment has significantly improved in terms of ordering? And, uh, you know, yet we see that, uh, you know, on most of the parameters, we are stuck at the lower end of our, you know, historical range in working capital or margins or execution of the orders also. So, yeah, so that's it from my side. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. We take the next question from the line of Viraj Mehta from Aquarius PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Sir, I think if you can just answer the gun's question, uh, um, that would be one of my questions anyways. Yeah, so, uh, so, so would you just like to repeat that question one? Uh, one so, I, uh, so, so, sir, uh, the question was, if you were to look at our working capital as a percentage of sales and our margin, uh, we are actually at a much worse stage than what historically we have done over last eight years. Whereas if hmm. we were to compare it ourselves to some of the other product players, and there are a plethora of them, but across the businesses, if you look at, it, or look at them, all of them have significantly improved their margins this year and are guiding better margins next year compared to last year and the year before. But we are not seeing any of that. Can you say why that is happening? Why is there such a vast dis uh, difference in that? So it's a, uh, in the EPC business, we have taken a big hit because of the commodity pr uh, price hike. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we have taken a big hit uh, for, from the commodity price hike. There is also, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, cost overruns because of COVID. Uh, the, the projects are uh, 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 taking a much lo a longer duration to complete. Uh, we have got delivery extension in most cases from the clients, but they do not compensate us increased costs because of, uh, 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 you know, COVID or other reasons. So, uh, as uh, 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 these projects uh, that, that we are doing are longer duration projects than w w w we have been typically doing. Um, the PSU orders are, are much longer. The, the, the payment terms are more uh, stretched. The, ca the cash flow is not as uh, good as in the private sector because it's all uh, uh, sort of um, bunched up towards the end of the, uh, the project. This year, we hope that most of our, uh, uh, a lot of our uh, uh, PSU projects that were taken on adverse uh, uh, terms, most of them will be completed uh, or, or will be substantially completed by the end of this year. 
So we do uh, think that the, uh, the the working capital position would improve uh, 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 significantly. These projects have also been delayed because uh, the the government or the PSUs have been uh, have been delaying giving approval uh, because obviously they also face the same problems as we were faced uh, in COVID. So, so we were in some ways forced to go sl uh, 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 slower. They have uh, agreed in most cases to increase uh, um, uh, time period, but at the same time, uh, um, uh, the, the, the costs at the sites have been mounting. We have now become very selective in taking orders. Uh, we uh, 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 are taking orders with better margins now. And uh, uh, we could have taken a lot more orders, but we have reduced uh, 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 the order. Right. So, sir, going forward, is it fair to assume that the margins that we did this year, both in the product division and in the EPC division, uh, is, is the worst behind us? Like, when do we return to the profitability that you mentioned a year back? When do we return to high single digit, 9-10% EBIT margin kind of the number for the whole company? I think we'll be able to give you a clearer picture by Q3 uh, because we'll be sure about uh, the completion of a lot of projects and uh, the, the commodity price hike and things uh, which have happened. All the commodity prices have softened. If these continue to remain the way they are, then uh, 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 there may be an improvement. But by Q3, we'll definitely be able to give you a much uh, a clearer picture. Right. And sir, we have essentially lost 40 crore this year on our ethanol plant in Philippines, if I look at the segmental numbers. And on a quarterly basis, we will continue to lose 12 and a half, 13 crore, not even counting cost of capital. I, I mean, my sincere request to the management, and I'm sure you're looking at it, but is to have some resolution to it, right? We can't be having uh, uh, so much capital tied up and lose 12, 13 crores a quarter on a plant which is under construction. No, you are absolutely correct. So now that the, uh, the COVID uh, situation has, op uh, has uh, 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 sort of improved and Philippines is allowing Indians to come in, uh, uh, our teams have been there, uh, the contractors have been selected, and uh, in June itself, we are working, uh, starting to complete the plant. I mean, uh, we, we are starting activities to complete the plant, uh, starting activities on the ground uh, 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 to complete the plant, and we hope that within one year, the plant will be operational. In the meanwhile, we have inquiries to uh, uh, some people who might be interested in buying the plant, we are evaluating it, but uh, but we are uh, working to complete the plan. Right, right. And sir, if the prices of steel where they are, or the commodities, all the commodities, steel, copper, everything put together where they are today, um, what kind of, and we have taken fixed price contracts, even what we have taken in last three to six months, we would have taken it at a slightly higher margin or higher commodity prices. Is it fair to assume that if now the commodity prices keep falling, like we actually lost a lot of margins because of fixed price, if the commodity prices fall now, a lot of those fixed price gains should come to us? They, uh, uh, they should, but we will evaluate and, uh, and let you know in the next call or the call after that. Yes. Theoretically, what you're saying is correct, and we also feel it, uh, it will happen. But the, com uh, the commodity prices have come off in the last, uh, 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 very recently. And then, do you know, uh, 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 prices of things like copper and uh, um, aluminium have an indirect effect on electricals and other items. So we we're just waiting for the market to absorb uh, the reduction and reduce those prices. So we will have a clearer picture uh, uh, shortly. Sure. And the last one question, uh, on five and a half thousand crore top line that we did, uh, we have seven and a half thousand crore order book. Um, what do you expect on a rough basis to be growth this year? This year, the, the, the growth should be about, say, about 5%. So 5,700, 5,800. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir, and best of luck.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Prakshi Chaudhary from East Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, so I would like to know your outlook on FGD segment with government making some big announcement related to it recently. And also if you can uh, uh, give some color on the kind of opportunity you are likely to capture in this segment. No, so FGDs, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the market is still there for FGDs and we are continuing to bid for FGDs. Uh, we are seeing some private sector interest in FGDs, we are seeing some state government interest in FGDs. Uh, the market is lumpy because they're high value projects. So if you get one, it's uh, high value. If you don't get it, it's, it's not that high value. But uh, we are um, uh, 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 we are buoyant on that market, and uh, we do hope to put some orders in the next few quarters. Okay, sir. I would also like to know your plans on the ethanol business. So, uh, 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 our own ethanol plant or uh, 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 selling ethanol plants to others? So, your own? So, our own ethanol plant is working in capacity. And uh, um, uh, ever since we got all our uh, uh, approvals in December, and uh, the plant is running very well, both in terms of capacity utilization, uh, which is close to 100%, and in terms of efficiencies. Okay. Uh, so that's it from me. Thank you so much for taking my questions and wish you good luck for the coming quarter. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We take the next question from the line of Abhishek Kali, individual investor. You may go ahead, sir. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, what is the feed stock for our ethanol production at Saraswati Sugar Mills? Uh, is it sugarcane juice or bee heavy? Bee, uh, bee heavy. Okay, and uh, uh, are there any plans for capacity expansion of the ethanol plant at Saraswati Sugar Mills? Uh, we are looking at a potential capacity expansion. Uh, we should uh, allow us to produce more uh, per day, but the season may get shorter because the economics will improve with that. Uh, the, the total that we produce in a year may, may remain the same. We, we are, uh, we've uh, applied for an extension, but whatever uh, we do, we are not going to make uh, very heavy investments uh, into it. We, we are looking at uh, an uh, some approvals coming by December, January, um, whereby we may be able to uh, produce more ethanol, but uh, the, the, uh, it's going to be the very marginal investments. Okay, uh, sir, if I may ask, uh, uh, this is the question regarding the Philippines plant. Um, like you said, there are some inquiries that we have received. So uh, how much uh, ballpark do we expect if and when that plant gets sold? Or I think in the previous con calls have also indicated that if operationally we think that uh, it would be more profitable operating it ourselves, we would rather consider that as well. So uh, where are we on that? I mean, I, I would like to know the ballpark number first. So uh, ballpark, I think we, we, uh, we have no number, but we can only say that we expect uh, 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 the valuations to increase considerably once the plant is completed. Or, or, or we can demonstrate that the plant is, uh, is going to be completed soon. Okay. And sir, from uh, in the next three quarters, how much do you think would be our average cash burn in order to set up the plant, or we have accounted for that uh, already? This is Kishore Chetman here. So uh, we have we have a loan sanction from a bank in Philippines. Yes. So we will not be we will not be uh, putting in uh, any any money from here. The 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 loan will be taken by the Philippines company on its own books. Okay. Okay. Guaranteed by his check, but we will not take right. money money from I mean, insignificant amounts of money with this. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it from my side, and best of luck for the upcoming quarters. Thank you. Thank you very much. We take the next question from the line of Vigantaria Green Edge Wealth. You may go ahead, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. So you mentioned that, uh, that that you know because of the slow moving order, and especially in the public sector order, is uh, 
we are facing challenges in margins, working capital, everything. So what would that be as a proportion of the uh, you know total order backlog of 7,300 crores? So today, uh, PSU order book is about 39% of our total order book. Right. Uh, and and due, due to COVID, we are thankful to get orders from the PSUs because export orders had uh, totally died, dried up. But we are hoping that uh, the export orders proportion in our, in our order book increases. There are, of course, better margin also. And the, the PSU order book should come down to about 25-30%. Right, but, uh, but you know, when you say 39% is the current order book, would, would, that, would all of that 2,800 crores of the PSU orders qualify as, you know, fixed rate, low margin, high working capital orders? Or? Uh, they are not fixed price. They, they, most of them have a price variation clause. And price variation clauses work both ways, which means uh, if the commodity prices go up, uh, you get a higher, higher, higher relation, and if they go down, you, they, they go down. But they are almost all of them high working capital uh, requirement because PSU payments only come on achievement of milestones. Right, right, right. And then, and you know, assuming a normal world, not like COVID, you know, what would what would the proportion of this public sector orders be for ISJEC in the coming years? Because as far as I remember, before 2018, this number used to be significantly lower than 39, 40 percent. Also, that's right. Uh, that was because we were uh, having maybe more than 20 percent as our export order book. And typically, the PSU order book used to be 20, 20 odd percent, and the balance was coming from private private sector. So um, uh, there is there is uh, as you know something good about the PSU. They always have the budget and the money to in, give orders, but they are very demanding customers in terms of uh, lower prices and cash flows. Right, right, right. So so, so that, but yeah, you know they are demanding. That's fine. But uh, the thing is that will will we as a company see a reduction in this order book as our export order book and domestic order book from private sector go up? If private sector investment increases, we uh, uh, we, uh, we would look at uh, uh, so, sort of uh, 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 decreasing the the uh, the, the share of uh, PSUs. But uh, it is a fact that the PSU uh, 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 in the recent past, I mean in the last year or year and a half, uh, uh, PSUs are also sort of becoming more liberal in their payment terms. The FGD orders that we took in round one or round two had much worse uh, payment terms than what they uh, they were in the last few rounds. <clears throat> got it, got it, got it. Got it, Saha. So, yeah, that, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Ms. Ashna from ICC Securities. Ma'am, you may go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, hi. Sir, First question is on the Philippines plant. So what is the total investment that we have done on the plant till date? Uh, we have a large outstanding amount from the plant, from that company. Uh, you know, we acquired it after the dispute with the customer, then we acquired it and became our, became our subsidiary. After our acquisition, we have given out loans of about 50 crore rupees to, to, to sustain till now. Uh, but further investment is going to be done out of a loan to be taken by that company there in Philippines. And what is the expected amount of the loan for uh, the balance construction work that is pending? It, it, it is about 100, 180 crores. Okay. And sir, out of this 50 crore outstanding amount, how much is that is the OPEX cost and how much would be towards the CAPEX of the plant? It is largely OPEX. Okay. For salaries, for upkeep of the plant, for insurance, uh, it's largely open. And uh, as per your uh, recent order book, your railway order book has been on a declining trend for uh, past couple of quarters. So what would be the reason for that? Is it that the ordering has been slow or we've been uh, bidding less over there? So as we said earlier, we've become very selective in taking orders. And uh, so wherever we see the competition intensity to be high, 
and uh, um, uh, the, the prices to fall because as you know, this is all through the tender route. There is no uh, premium for better quality or uh, um, better execution. Uh, uh, we, we are uh, uh, staying away from those projects. Also, it has come down because we have completed certain projects recently. Okay, sir. So then going forward, are we seeing any opportunity once things stabilize and uh, once commodity prices also stabilize, any opportunity from the Vande Bharat uh, uh, plan that has From the opportunities from? The Vande Bharat uh, program. Well, the, yes, we, we do see some opportunities. Uh, uh, we, we are evaluating them and uh, uh, there could be opportunities, but they, they have to be, uh, as and when the opportunities come, they have to be very critically evaluated. Okay, sir. And uh, sir, in the ethanol distillery that you mentioned that you uh, started operating in uh, previous quarters, so what would be the average capacity utilization uh, for the full quarter? Was it 100% for the entire quarter? It, it was 99.9 .9 something, something. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, and when can we expect it to, uh, you know, break even or uh, like currently it is posting losses, so... No, it posted a loss in, in the first quarter because uh, because of the lower sales and booking all the full interest and depreciation and so on. But uh, uh, it should be it should be profitable from the current quarter. Okay, and sir, if you can repeat the order intake number for the quarter. Order intake for the quarter on a consolidated basis yes. was. Uh, one four four two fourteen hundred forty two crores. Okay, and so similar number for Hitachi for this quarter and for March twenty one. Uh, I have the total uh, orders in hand for Hitachi, but I I yeah, can, I can get get, get you in a, in a couple of minutes. I'll I'll answer it after a couple. Of Okay, and so overall, how is the profitability looking for Hitachi? You last thing you mentioned that uh, some uh, uh, high complex uh, uh, machinery equipment is what Hitachi had been working on. So, if you could throw some light on that. So, uh, we expect the profitability this year to be much better. Uh, it was hit last year partly because of commodity pricing and partly because uh, 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 of shipping disruptions, which were shipping which was in the scope of the customer. He could not lift. Uh, 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 um, uh, customers could not lift a lot of the cargo. Uh, so um, uh, this year uh, certainly looks better than last. Okay, Thank you. Thank you very much. Is it Hitachi? The order booking that you are asking for uh, for this quarter was 70 crores. And for the full year, it booked 520 crores of uh, orders, new orders. Compared to that, for the last year, their order booking was 250 crores. So order booking in this in the current year is twice of what it booked in the previous year. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. We take the next question from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equivarius PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mehta. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Harish from HS Investments. Go ahead, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. I basically have two questions. Uh, what was the total capex of last year? And could you share the capex plan for the coming year? And uh, my another question is, if you can please elaborate on your technology tire with UCC Environmental, USA, uh, which was mentioned in the investor presentation. Thank you. And how it will be helping us in the future. Total, total CapEx this year was 56 crores in, in ISDEC Heavy Engineering standalone. And this year, uh, the, the coming year uh, would be uh, probably in the same rate. And as far as the UCC tie-up is concerned, this is another technology which... Uh, so, so in India, there are some thermal plants 
who uh, uh, based on coal uh, uh, as the fuel, which uh, who, uh, their capacity, uh, their residual life is not very high. So for them, uh, there is this alternative technology, which is low on investment, low on capex, but high on opex. So if the residual uh, uh, life is, go is less, and the plant is going to say shut down in the next five years, six years. Uh, uh, then the plants prefer to go this route, the, the route of uh, lower capex and higher uh, uh, opex. It makes more sense to them. So we we have uh, tied up with them, and we've got our first order uh, 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 for uh, for such a plant. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Aditya Mehta, Dynamic Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You're audible, yes. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, uh, I'm sorry I, I joined the call a bit late, but I just had one question. So I wanted to know the reason for no export of sugar last year and also would like to know the outlook for the business uh, for next year or let's say for next two years. So uh, let me talk about export of sugar. So as you know, in the earlier years, the central government was giving a subsidy for exports. During the, the current year, there was no subsidy for exports. So most of the sugar that is getting exported out of India is being exported from the coastal states of Maharashtra and Karnataka. We, as you know, are situated in Haryana. We are about 1,500 kilometers from the nearest uh, viable port. So it's, uh, we, our, our realization on export was not working out to be uh, uh, good compared to the prices that can be offered, export prices that can be offered by the coastal states. So that is one. The second is uh, these, uh, most of the sugar that's exported from India was raw sugar. Uh, we could have chosen to make raw sugar, but we can all, only make at the beginning of the season or end of the season. Since we did not have uh, viable, uh, visibility of viable prices, we did not make raw sugar. The sugar that we make uh, goes to largely three countries, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and Indonesia. So you saw uh, difficult political difficulties in Afghanistan and in Sri Lanka. So they were not really buying our kind of sugar. So uh, there was not so much demand for our sugar. Uh, but nevertheless, there are pockets in the world, uh, so some, some countries where our sugar is very popular. So in spite of our prices being higher, we have booked some orders of about uh, 10,800 tons. Mr. Puri talked about it in the, in, in, when he spoke. So, and those have been dispatched this year. In any case, uh, our, our relation has been good. So while quantity of sugar sold is less, our relation has been good. And we are carrying a large stock of uh, of sugar, which the profits will come in when we when we uh, sell that sugar. Okay, okay, sir. So, so, so uh, the profits which you are talking about should be maybe in next year or let's say in two years. Uh, how would during, that the, be? during the current year, sir, sugar is getting sold every month. So, current okay. year. Yeah. All right, all right. Okay, sir. Understood. Understood. Uh, fine, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to the queue. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mehta. We take the next question from the line of Kriti Sooth from NVS Research. You may go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand what is the outlook of margins for next year? Is the worst of margin pressure due to raw material price inflation behind us? So uh, we, uh, uh, in the beginning, we said that uh, you know uh, the prices, uh, the quality inflation uh, 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 was unprecedented. At least unprecedented in my <laughs> since I have been in this. But uh, um, uh, 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 prices have cooled down the last few days or so. We are still evaluating it, and uh, in the next call, uh, we will let you. Uh, we will have a clearer. Uh, so as of now, the, the commodity prices have pulled out. How long they stay this way, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we are yet to evaluate. Okay, okay, all right. 
my next question is what percentage of your orders are fixed price and could we see more margin pressure in future because of uh, similar orders booked earlier uh we have uh, some fixed price contracts uh, uh and on that because of the 60% because of that the commodity pricing softening there would be an impact uh, but we will evaluate everything and uh, uh, let you know in, uh, next quarter or the quarter after that all right if i may ask one more question uh, uh, we have seen that sure. exports have been falling since last 4 5 years uh what is the reason for the same and your outlook so uh last two years uh, because of covid there was no travel and there was no um uh, uh we could not meet the customers uh, uh physically uh, uh th that has uh, uh since uh, the last few months uh, travel has commenced and uh, uh, uh this situation on export is looking uh, uh um the booking this year will be a uh, better than order booking okay thank you sir that's it from my side thank you ma'am we take the next question from the line of mr vp rajesh from banyan tree capital please go ahead yeah hi thanks for the opportunity uh, just um, you know as a new investor i'm trying to understand the um investment we have made in the uh, philippines plant um so what is the loan outstanding as on date uh, including the 50 crore you mentioned uh, earlier on the call and how much more will you be investing this year i.e. the loan amount that you are getting from the uh, philippines bank uh, to complete the plant so just trying to get an idea of what is our total cost going to be in this plant so the uh, 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 since you are a new investor nevertheless you may have read that this was a, a plant we were constructing for a customer and yes. we had a disagreement with the customer and in cases and so on and in the end we en ended up acquiring the 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 plant and the assets of course the assets came with certain loans uh, on them so the loan is uh, roughly equal to 36 million uh, us dollars it's in pesos uh, it's from a local bank uh, local development bank in philippines but it's roughly equal to 36 million us dollars and uh, the the loan that we are going to be taking now is going to be something like 180 crores something equivalent to 24 million dollars okay so 36 plus 24 so 60 million dollars is the cost plus whatever you have spent on the opex side that you mentioned earlier right that's sort of the total in fact there uh, there is also the earlier investment by the earlier owner the plant and the value much more than that okay so would you say that whatever you have put in so far is the market value higher than what you have put in or you think the returns on this plant will be significantly higher uh, and therefore continuing with this capex makes sense i'm just trying to understand you know why would you not uh, look to exit this or um, you know look for some kind of jv etc so that our financial exposure is uh, limited actually sir we have been trying for uh, what you are saying we have been trying for it the market value is higher but uh, because of covid there was a lot of uh, uh, poor economic sentiment in philippines and therefore it, uh, in spite of our trying we could not get uh, i was at a reasonable price also we have realized that that uh, any any prospective buyer if he sees a plant at a standstill a con plant under construction at a standstill he wants to offer a lower uh, lower valuation than than if the plant is being constructed or completed so that's how we are proceeding towards plant and we think uh, of course to answer your first question the, the valuation is higher than uh substantially higher than that but for okay. the purpose of of the puri also mentioned in this that uh, work can now start in philippines because the visas to indians are now allowed since april our teams have been there we are proceeding to start construction on the plant in june right and it will take about a year to complete 
And then my question is that how long will it take from there on to uh, start throwing, let's say, positive EBITDA? So if we, uh, we, are, uh, we have examined the economics and we are willing to run the plant, uh, but we are also open to, to sell the plant if we can find a buyer at a reasonable range. No, no, I understand that, but I'm just trying to understand, you know, let's say you'll spend now 180 crores to construct that plant. And then before it starts uh, turning positive cash flow for us, we will have to uh, invest some more. So I'm just trying to understand what that amount could be in fiscal year 24. No, uh, uh, we believe that this 180 crores will largely cover the investment required. It will require uh, working capital uh, loans to, 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 to operate the plant, which we, we can hope to get from uh, Philippine banks. I see. Okay. Thank you so much. That's all I had. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Anurag Patil from Roha Asset Managers. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So for uh, Saraswati uh, ethanol plant, uh, next year, what kind of uh, EBIT margins we can expect at full utilization? EBIT margins on, on the ethanol plant? Yes, sir. Uh, right. So it is uh, already turning, uh, 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 EBIT margins are already positive. And uh, the, the EBIT margins are already uh, uh, positive. And, uh, how how much can we expect EBIT margins next year? We, have, we 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 are still working on the fact that uh, uh, um, uh, what what is the maximum that we can uh, uh, subject to getting some uh, approvals that we expect um, uh, expect in the course of the next month. Uh, what is the maximum we can run the plant, and what is the alternative speed? Uh, we also, uh, for instance, looking at whether we can use juice to make ethanol. Uh, so we, we'll give you a figure next time, but the, the, the EBIT margins are not bad. Okay, sir. And sir, you said in FY23 you are expecting 5% revenue growth. So am I correct in listening that? Yes, yes. So, sir, if you run the ethanol plant for four quarters, at least 100 crore incremental revenues will be added. So, rest of the segments, are you expecting only 100, the, 150? The 5%, sir, the 5% was talked about in terms of eject as a whole, as a consolidated entity. It was not, not about the, the sugar plant or ethanol plant. Yeah, yeah, that I understand, sir. But at a consolidated level, 5% revenue growth should translate to 250 odd crore or something. And right. even ethanol plant only can contribute at least 100 crore incremental. So my question is that whether... No, no, that is not the right way to look at it, sir, because when you use the heavy uh, molasses, you're actually consuming sugar, and, uh, you know, which, which would normally have been produced and sold, but taking that sugar and putting it into the ethanol. So okay. that's not the right way to look at it. Okay, but sir, still at the overall level, the given additional, the strong... Additional turnover that will come from ethanol, yes. Uh, maybe 70% of it is, is actually coming from a reduction of the sugar revenue. Yes, sir. Understood. Uh, but, sir, uh, given the strong 7200 crore order book, still I feel that uh, guidance is kind of uh, very conservative. Many of our orders uh, uh, are, are longer duration orders. You know, the typical order execution cycle particularly for the, the project business, can be 24 months to 30 months, 35 months. Okay, okay, understood. Thank you very much, sir. That's it for my side. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Nishit from Equities Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, good evening, sir, and thank you for this opportunity. So most of my questions are answered. So one thing I noticed that our standalone structuring revenue is around 460 crores, which is higher than our uh, recent numbers. So is there anything one-off, or can we sustain this number, this number going forward? No, the, the, the manufacturing uh, revenue actually depends on 
what what equipment and machines get delivered because in manufacturing we are following the sale of goods for counting yes so uh, on a on a annual basis if you see on a stand loan manufacturing is about 1295 crores yes we can expect this to grow a bit uh, but quarter to quarter is not the right way of looking at it. okay understood sir and sir lastly what is the outlook for eagle press outlook for eagle press well eagle did go through a uh, th- through a, a difficult time because of uh, first covid and because its main customers are automobiles uh, uh, it's based on automobile output and um, yeah, because of the chip shortage in north america the production of uh, cars was not uh, going up but uh, the outlook has improved uh, uh, recently and um, we have booked some orders and um, uh, we expect to book some uh, good orders the inquiry flow is good so th- this year should be uh, 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 much better than the last year okay sir thank you thank you mr nishit a reminder to all the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone We take the next question from the line of Mr. Mihir from Desai Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So I have few uh, micro questions. So starting uh, with sugar industry. So as uh, we see that the Brazil uh, crop is, you know, uh, going to come, which uh, was in a deficit last season. So, uh, so will this impact uh, the realization drastically for sugar? i just wanted to uh, uh an understanding from your end sir so uh, the international market uh, has been in deficit for the last uh last few years that's why you were saying that the export prices realized by us uh, by india are mm-hmm. decent the international dynamics are also brazil uh, the mills have a lot of flexibility into making sugar or making ethanol they can use the same same juice to make uh, they can they can switch very easily and given today's uh, position of uh, higher oil prices one would expect brazil to divert more uh, more uh, sugar content towards ethanol and that will leave a good opportunity for us for india to export sugar okay so sure, so we are on a safer side is what i understand Yes, if you notice, the government is saying that there is India has exported this year uh, already about 82 uh, million tons, uh, pardon me, 82 lakh tons of of sugar, okay. and and the government has now restricted exports to 100 lakh tons. Okay. The government wants to leave enough sugar in the country for the next two months consumption. So, but next year's production is expected to be high. and therefore it will be enough to cover the domestic requirement and india should be i think india has established itself very well in the export market for the last 3 4 years exports have been going up so so we should see good exports from india yeah uh, so my next question is around the defense sector sir as uh, india is uh, you know under make in india india is going aggressively in boosting the defense sector so uh, do we have any opportunity uh, uh, to participate or you know some pockets which we can explore in this sector so as far as uh, defense is concerned we continue to uh, get small value orders uh, periodically uh, for defense and these orders are um, uh, for sophisticated uh, 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 sophisticated manufacturing uh but uh, we, we are not uh, entering into any long term tie up for one particular product because the gestation period the investments are heavy the gestation uh, period is high and the market is also uncertain so uh, uh, we, we we are not gambling uh, on the defense sector in a big way but opportunistic opportunistically when there are inquiries uh, um, yeah, we we quote for them and uh, we are getting some success there Sure, sir. So, lastly, I just wanted to ask on our revenue mix. 
So uh, the current revenue mix, which is there, uh, is comprised of manufacturing, uh, EPC, and sugar. So uh, going forward, after you know two to three years down the line, do we see this mix changing, or it would be on this range only? So uh, we uh, we are uh, uh, trying to look for opportunities to increase uh, manufacturing. And uh, we are uh, planning to make marginal investments as we, uh, as we uh, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, um, Chetani gave the figure for last year's investments, uh, capital investments. This year also we might do some investments to uh, increase the, the, the manufacturing uh, 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 base. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, the projects business is concerned, uh, because in the projects business a lot is outside our control because uh, um, uh, raw material for, uh, is a very major component of the total uh, contract price. Uh, we will be selective. Uh, we are ourselves looking at costs very uh, carefully, and we will be selective in taking orders uh, where the margins are reasonable. Yes, sir. Uh, so best of luck, and thanks for answering my questions. If I have more questions, I'll join the queue. Thank you, Mr. Mihir. We take the next question from the line of Ms. Ashna from ICC Securities. Ma'am, you may go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, so just one uh, clarification I needed. Uh, in the beginning of the call, you mentioned that uh, order intake uh, expectation uh, growth for FY23 is close to 5%. Is that correct? No, I think uh, Mr. Chitani spoke about the 5% uh, uh, was the increase in mm -hmm. the revenue. Okay, and so FY24, is, uh, we can uh, have a look. We can give you guidance later on that. Let, 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 this, uh, 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 um, let, let us first take this. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand over the conference to the management for closing comments. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, all the investors. Or, or potential investors for joining this uh, uh, conference. Uh, wishing you all the best, and then we will again touch base uh, roughly three, uh, three months from now. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. On behalf of ICSA Security, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.